Let's talk about this study. Uh, I believe you conducted it in 2006 uh, with some others here at the Physicians Committee, and you found a strong link, not not just, you know, a link, but a strong link to a uh, plant-based, low-fat diet and lower glycemic levels. Um, talk to me a little bit about this study. H how was it conducted? Double-blind? Um, this was a study funded by the National Institutes of Health, and we had, we had done prior studies. Um, on showing that a vegan diet would help people lose weight, right. that it would help uh, their body to respond to insulin better. And we'd done a small study with our friends at Georgetown University um, looking at people who had type 2 diabetes, and a vegan diet looked really good, but it was a small number of people. Mm -hmm. So what, what NIH funded us to do was to bring in a larger group of people, half of them going on what you might think of as a conventional diet where you're counting carbohydrate grams and cutting calories to lose weight and that kind of that's sort of standard practice. Sure. And then the experimental program was vegan, meaning no animal products. But it was two other things. Not only was it, not only did we leave animal products out, so that's a vegan diet, it was also low in fat. So we, we, we taught people how to cook without adding oil to things. Um, and the third thing was we helped them to pick their carbohydrate containing foods using something called the glycemic index. And we can come up, come back to that. But three points, no animal products, keep oils low, and use the glycemic index or the GI. Um, and as you said, um, the results were uh, mind blowing. When you looked at people who, who they, were not, they were not changing their exercise. When you looked at the people who didn't change their medication use at all, um, some people had to come off their medication, but when we looked at people who kept everything constant, the improvement in hemoglobin A1C, which is the marker we use for blood sugar control, it was three times better wow. in the vegan group than the other group. In fact, it was better than any oral medication. It was better than any prescription you could um, fill for any kind of oral diabetes medication. And this was from eating asparagus and beans and rice and bread and peaches and just normal food right. um, without medication. And people did just fantastic. And, and the higher... The, the more out of control they were coming in, the more dramatic the effect. Um, and we started at that point. This was 2003 when that study began, and it was 2006 when we published the first results. And we started to see diabetes going away, which just, I was maybe not really prepared for that. I, we, we were not, that was not the goal of the study. Sure. The goal was just to see how much blood sugars could improve. I didn't want to get people off their medicines. I didn't want to change anything. I just wanted to see how much can they improve. But we had people where they had to reduce their medications for safety or get off them, and their blood sugars would improve so much um, that we started to see people who didn't have diabetes anymore. And that was uh, quite a new experience for me. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty powerful oh, wow moment. I mean, especially not having, it sounds like, these type of expectations coming in. What were your specific expectations? Because you did have that small sample study before you did this big yeah. one with the NIH. I mean, was this literally like kind of knock your socks off? Like, holy cow, we're really onto something here. Yeah, um, that's what it became. Um, we, we, we went into it um, in a very open-minded way. We wanted to really see what the diet would do, and we wanted to have it be a very fair test, and we wanted to really help people to adhere to both diets um, to see. And, and people in both diets did well. They, they really did. Um, and, and by the way, when, when you do a study, you know, you have to have people teaching a vegan diet who do a vegan diet mm -hmm. because otherwise they don't know, you know, what do you order at Taco Bell? I mean, they're not going to answer your questions. <laughs> but for the conventional diet, you have to have the people teaching it be people who believe in that diet right? because they know the answers to the questions. Um, so that's what we did, and we hired a terrific team for both diets, and they and, and people were did a good job. But I have to say, having finished it, um, I really cannot see the point of any kind of diet that includes cheese or meat or even small amounts of it, you know, get rid of it so that you can have a really powerful diet. Yeah, that was one of the questions I actually wanted to ask uh, of you is, uh, you know, I would assume the more strict and stringent you are about making sure that you follow, you know, this whole food, plant-based diet, zero animal product, the better your results are going to be. Right. Have you seen, you know, kind of the effect of somebody that's, you know, we'll call them a five-day vegan and, you know, on the weekends they kind of go hog wild. Were you able to track anything like that? Uh, yeah. Um, you, you will, you will, you will, you'll see this with weight. You'll see it with diabetes, uh, their blood sugar control. You'll see it with um, their cholesterol control is when if a person really follows it 
they're going to do well. Um, if they start with any kind of wishful thinking, thinking, all right, I can have steak on the weekend, mm-hmm. their progress grinds to a halt. Wow. Their weight loss stops. They're going to start putting it back. And, and think about this. As an, as an analogy, let's say you're a smoker. Mm-hmm. And you've got chronic bronchitis, and, and if you look into the lungs, they're inflamed. Um, you've got COPD and all this. Kind of, you may not have lung cancer, but your lungs are, are hurting. And your doctor says, I think you should quit. And you do. And you, you discover that your lungs are starting to clean themselves out. But then after a while, you think, hey, you're at a party. You think, how much can it hurt me to have a cigarette you know, on the weekend, two, right. or two or three? Well, maybe not much, but your lungs are already fragile. They're already being harmed by this. And it, it, now it does not take that much for you to keep that harm um, continuing to progress. So if you've got diabetes um, or if you have narrowed arteries or something, like that, you, you need to set aside completely the things that, are ca- that, that cause that disease in the first place if you want to heal. Let's say um, you pick at your skin a little bit fine. Nothing much is going to happen. But if I have a gaping wound there and I'm trying to let it heal and I pick at it just a little bit, it's never going to heal. Right. So um, if a person is doing something like a vegan diet, they are, first of all, they're not loving themselves enough. <laughs> you know, blind, <laughs> well blind, said. Blindness, amputations, loss of kidney functions, and loss of at least a decade of life. Wow. That's what diabetes brings to the average person who's got it. A decade. Yeah. That's that's substantial. Yeah, yeah. Now I don't mean to say everyone goes goes blind, everyone gets amputations, so forth. But but this is the number one cause of it, and the average person does lose more than a decade. Yeah. However, um, pick up a book, make these recipes, um, and it doesn't have to be my book. There are now many people who are going in the same direction. Um, you can turn this around, and the sooner you get to it, and the more complete you do it, the more you're going to live a total totally healthy life, a uh, totally normal life. And there's no reason not to give that to yourself. And also, the other part, the other part of it is, um, I used to smoke cigarettes. Did you really? Yes, I did. No. I, I know I'm descending in your estimation. Are you Chuck. kidding me right now? When I, was, uh, when I was a resident in the hospital at GW, I would stop by our gift shop, and I would buy Merit menthols, and I would light them up, and my head of surgery was there buying Marlboros, and we could smoke walking down the hallway of the hospital on the way to the doctor's lounge where it was like Pittsburgh's worst nightmares, yeah. you know. Now, we weren't stupid. Um, we knew that you had to – You had to. We, we knew that cigarettes caused cancer. Sure. But we also knew it took a long time to get cancer. And mm. as long as I quit before too long, I'll be all right. I'm under stress now. So um, eventually we all did quit, of course. Right. But what I discovered in quitting smoking – Couple things. First of all, quitting smoking is hard. Going to, going vegan is easy. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, going vegan. I mean, there's stuff to eat. You know. Right. Um, with with smoking, it's harder. So going vegan is much is much easier. The other thing I discovered is that you can cut down, but if you cut down, then you're always reawakening that desire for the cigarette. If you just say, "Look, leave me alone." And you forget about it. After a period of time, you're not thinking about it so much, and it's not calling your name. And in other words, it's easier to just take things that are harmful to you and just leave them out rather than tempt yourself with a little bit every now and then. So, so a person who says, okay, i got diabetes, I'd like to lose weight or whatever, but I'm just going to do this in moderation. I'll do it 90% or whatever. That's a person who is teasing themselves and reawakening their desire for something that doesn't love them back. And it's so much easier to just build a fence. Now, I'm a kid of the 60s. And in the 1960s, we hated rules. We didn't want rules about what we would dress. We didn't want rules about, about like anything. Rebel. Well, you know, and I mean, kids are always like that, but, you know, especially in that era. And so I'm a little allergic to rules, but I got to tell you, there are some times when you want to build a wall between you and an unhealthy food. Right. I shouldn't use the word wall because that, that's such a loaded term. That I forget I said that. I'm going to build some barrier between me and something that's going to hurt me. I see. Okay, um, you're a funny guy. Yeah, anyway, you got you got my point. Um, don't tease yourself with something that's going to hurt you. Right. It's something you're trying to get away from. It is way easier to just get away from it. The cards on the table. You know, you, you're not the only ex-smoker in this room. I was a two-pack-a-day guy uh, back when I was still 400 pounds. Chuck, I'm so disappointed. I only smoked one. Ah, well, <laughs> I mean, they got so expensive. I mean, I, I didn't just quit for health reasons. I mean, the, yeah. the price went there so high. I mean, I was ordering mine off the Internet at one point, getting them in cheap from Europe. I mean, God only knows what was in those things. But um, You know, but but you know, we've all done all kinds of yeah. dumb things in our lives. And there are addictions. of, And I'm going to use addiction with a small a because it can be food it can be sugar it can be alcohol it can be anything 
people tend to to, to get stu- hooked on stuff. Yeah. And it's and I, I don't think it's some people. I think it's everybody gets kind of hooked on something. Sure. Um, and if it's not hurting you at all, and it's not hurting anybody else, who cares? Amen to that. But on the other hand, if you're if you're into something that's taking risks with your health, that you're paying a price for it, or it's coming into your life and it's going to affect other people in your family, or something like that, it's better to just say goodbye. Um, and inevitably, it is something that wasn't really enriching your life anyway. Mm. It just kind of seduced you for a while. I want to go back to the study because one of the things that really jumped out at me uh, when I was reading up about it, and, and I think that a lot of people are going to be like, hallelujah, when they hear this. So with this, you're not really counting calories. You know, you're not reducing your carbs. You're actually eating more carbs and right. you don't really have to necessarily watch what you eat correct exactly um the the when we did the study and to some extent even today conventional diabetes teaching says you're overweight you got to cut calories right and so all right how much do you eat in a week in a, in a day i eat two thousand calories okay here's your menu um and it adds up to only 1500 so mm-hmm. i'm subtracting 500 calories a day go to bed hungry uh, by nice. about Wednesday, you are ready to eat the sofa. <laughs> um, the other thing is the whole idea of limiting carbs. Um, so people have to add up their carbohydrate grams. They have, to, they have to look at everything they're eating, and it's, it becomes tedious. And we say, forget that. W- what, is, what is my goal? Um, my goal, uh, may, maybe we should take a, a minute or so to kind of maybe talk about the rationale why this vegan diet works. Because, by all means. Because that, that, that will explain why you don't need to car- count carb grams. Talk to me. Um, because what you're saying is right. We don't count carb, gra- carb grams. We let people eat more carbs than they're eating before. Um, they're going to be healthy foods, but, but there's more of it. Um, at Yale University, researchers Jerry Shulman and Kit Peterson and their teams did something that was groundbreaking. Using uh, MR spectroscopy, uh, anybody who's had an MRI, it's a big magnetic device that you go in the middle of this donut and it clanks around and it, it can look into your liver, it can look into your joints. That's MRI. Um, magnetic resonance spectroscopy looks into your muscles or into your liver and it's looking inside the cells and what I can find you might be 15 years old but if you're starting to get insulin resistance I can see why Mm. I I can see what's happening I can see what's happening inside your cells and what I'm seeing is you've got fat buildup inside your this is not this is not belly fat this is fat inside your muscle cells Hmm. now that's a, a new idea for people right you can see it on MR spectroscopy, you can see the build of a fat in their muscle cells, also in their liver cells. That stops their insulin from being able to work. So let me piece this together. If I diagnose you as having diabetes, all I'm saying is you got too much sugar in your blood. That sugar is not poison. That sugar is a good thing because it's trying to power your muscles. But it can't get in your muscles. That's what diabetes is all about. It's not getting inside the muscle cell. If it's type 1 diabetes, your body isn't making the insulin that lets it in. If you've got type 2 diabetes, your body is resisting the insulin, so the sugar builds up in the blood. So what's the deal? The cells are filled with fat, little fat particles inside the muscle cells and the liver cells. That buildup of fat stops insulin from working. So what i got to do is take the animal fat out of your diet, vegan diet. There's no animal fat left. If I keep vegetable oils low too, the fat starts draining out of the cell. And suddenly, the sugar can get in, and your diabetes goes away. And your doctor says, what is this? I've never heard of this. How can your diabetes possibly go away? It's very simple. The fat inside the cells is draining away. The insulin starts to be able to work again because it's not, the fat is not gumming up the cell anymore. And the blood sugar drops, and it drops, and it drops, and it drops. And the patient doesn't need so much medication. Eventually, they get off all their medications in some cases. And if all goes well, their diabetes just flat out reverses.